And it's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France. And this week, we're going to focus on a debate that comes up time and time again. Does the French president have too much power? And if so, should France change its current system? Florence Filmino is here. Uh, hi, Flo. Good to hey, see Monty. you. Well, so this question has been in the spotlight after President Macron forced through his very controversial pension reform plan through parliament, and we should say without a vote. Absolutely. Uh, the prime minister... Elisabeth Borne, she invoked an article of the French Constitution. It's Article 49.3, 49.3. It's our number du jour. It's a number that you've been hearing a lot if you've been following French news. This article of the French Constitution essentially gives France's executive the right to bypass parliament uh, without a vote and pass laws without a vote. So it's not the first time that the government or governments in general have triggered this Article 49.3, but it is a very controversial article, especially with such a big reform as the pension reform. Uh, it's uh, A lot of people say this was really the straw that broke the camel's back and ultimate, ultimate proof that there's something flawed with the French system. They, a lot of critics say this is proof that the, France, the French system is undemocratic uh, and the president is all too powerful. Remember, uh, Emmanuel Macron time and time again has been likened to the uh, god Jupiter, the Roman god Jupiter, and a lot of protesters say he's disconnected from the people and just has way too much power. Take a listen. Malgré tout, il le fait passer par la force, mais pour qui se prend-il well, and of course, criticism of the French presidential system, it predates Macron. The French presidency is a unique, it's immensely uh, powerful institution. In fact, experts say it's the most powerful office in the democratic world. Yeah, critics say the French president is the closest thing in the developed world to an elected dictator. Or they also say it's kind of like a, a temporary absolute monarch, which is pretty ironic for a country that fought so hard to get rid of its king. Now, French presidents have more power than leaders in other democracies, uh, so, such as Germany, the United Kingdom, and even arguably the United States at, at a smaller scale, of course. Now, the French president is both head of state and also the head of the executive branch. It's the French president who appoints the prime minister in France. And it's interesting to note that prime ministers in France have a lot less power than they do in other countries. And they're highly ejectable. And it's actually the president who really calls the shots and sets the nation's uh, policy agenda. So it would be tempting to say that this type of president, a strong leader in charge of everything, it's a form of nostalgia for the for the monarchy, but its historical origin, origin is much more recent. That's right. A strong president is a key feature of the Fifth Republic, the Cinquième République, which was ushered in by Charles de Gaulle, who was really the architect of the Fifth Republic, and this was with the Constitution of 1958. So it's important to understand the context of the Fifth Republic. It followed the Fourth Republic, surprise, surprise, which was put in place in 1946 following the Second World War and the Nazi occupation. Now, the Fourth Republic was a parliamentary republic, and so the parliament had a lot more power, but the period was really marked by chronic government instability and parliamentary paralysis and all this with the backdrop of the war in Algeria. So the idea emerged that France needed a strong leader to call the shots and reestablish order and stability. Now, could this be a slippery slope towards authoritarianism? Well, Charles de Gaulle thought not. So I guess you could say over the years, the Fifth Republic has lost some of its, its sheen, a disenchantment that's been shown in, in many ways. That's right. You just have to look at presidential approval ratings, for instance. If you look at François Mitterrand and Jacques Chirac, back in the day, they had approval ratings between 40 and 60 percent. And the last three presidents, it's been very different. Nicolas Sarkozy, François Hollande, and uh, Emmanuel Macron have a, had approval rate, ratings between 20 and 40 percent. Now, on top of that, vote abstention, uh, the voting abstention rate has really been dropping progressively over the years, including in the presidential race, which traditionally was a race that gathered a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of voting. There seems to be a growing disillusion with French politics and a growing 
resentment, which can be manifested with an increase in violent protesting, essentially. And some say that all this is proof of the fact that the system is broken and something needs to change. Well, in fact, there have been calls to reform the presidency and usher in a sixth republic, a republic where the parliament would have more power and then the president would have, have less power. That's right. And Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the uh, from the radical left, La France Insoumise, he's campaigned in several presidential elections uh, with this promise of a sixth republic. But the idea of a sixth republic goes beyond the left wing. It would require constitutional change, which has happened in the past in France. So the big question is, what would this sixth republic look like? Well, the big idea is for it to be less autocratic. Uh, and one of the main ideas is to deflate the role of the French president, give him or her more of a ceremonial role uh, like you have in other countries, and also boost the parliament's status to uh, basically give it more power so it can't be bypassed by the executive like it currently can. Because currently the French parliament is one of the weakest uh, in the world. And so that's one idea for the Sixth Republic. The other idea is to give more power to the people by giving citizens the power to initiate legislation with, say, a referendum instead of the current situation where basically the main outlet for people's anger is protesting in the streets time yeah. and time again. And I don't think we're going to see any end to the protesting anytime it's soon. It's the French way of life. It's the French way. Okay. Well, that does it for this edition of French Connections.